not born with any charism, you might be born with natural talents, and you might, so to speak, inherit those. Remember Pope Francis, one of those quotes I read earlier, he said, we don't inherit, they're not an inheritance, these gifts that we receive. They're a total gift given to us freely by God at our baptism. Along with everything else we receive at baptism, that, that grace, that cleansing, that membership in the church, becoming sons and daughters of God. So our spiritual gifts or charisms are rooted in baptism. We know that we are intimately loved by God. We know that we are named as a child of God at baptism. We're anointed with the prism of salvation. And know what happens at baptism. And, and Father Dave here, you witnessed an infant baptism during Mass, does a really good job of bringing this out. It really highlights that role of priest, prophet, and king, that we're given those three identities, those three um, roles of Christ, priest, prophet, king. By virtue of our baptism, we are all called to be a priest, a prophet, and a king like Christ. And those are mission identities to call us out we're baptized to evangelize. In baptism we become, as Pope Francis says, we're missionary disciples. That's what we're called to be. And so, you know, a priest is someone who shares the truth. You can use your gifts, whether it's, you know, some of the gifts of communication, maybe it's teaching, maybe it's evangelism, maybe it's writing, whatever it might be, to share the truth. A prophet is someone who shows us the way. <coughs> You don't have to have the gift of prophecy to fill that call of being a prophet like Christ. Um, maybe it's you know, the gift of leadership. You're showing someone the way. You're leading them to Christ, casting the vision. A king is one who serves all others. Yes, leads, but also serves. Those gifts of maybe helps and, and uh, service, giving, things like that. So at baptism, we receive the gifts. Our call then is, as we're doing here today, as part of the process, is to discern which gifts we have received, so we know how to use those and live out our mission that we're given at baptism to be those missionary disciples. If we talk about the other sacraments, confirmation. Of course, confirmation is a sacrament that's closely associated with the Holy Spirit. We talk about receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so those seven gifts that we find in the book of Isaiah. We receive at confirmation. Those should be distinguished from charisms. We receive our charisms at baptism. But confirmation strengthens those charisms and helps us, as a, as a sacrament of worship, helps us to go out and live them. It's part of the reason why, uh, in our day and age, we have chosen the teenage years to administer the sacrament of confirmation because when you're sort of becoming that age where you can uh, live out the gospel more freely, you might say, or more, more vocally, more actively in uh, society, in your sphere of influence. So it's that missionary sacrament where we're sent out. And so we're sent out to use our gifts, and our gifts are strengthened in that sacrament of confirmation. So it's very important in light of our charisms. Same with the Eucharist. It provides all for an opportunity to be given grace, and to have our fruitful identity as a Catholic Christian. We, of course, share the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. We receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. And we have that nourishment for our own spiritual souls, but also uh, we're sent out to bring that nourishment, to bring Christ, having received him in the Eucharist, to the world. And the way we can do that, the means through which we can bring Christ to the world, being sent out, like we talked about earlier, at the end of Mass, go forth uh, proclaiming the gospel with our lives, we can uh, use our charisms to communicate what we've received and to share that with others. Now speaking of confirmation and Eucharist, just from my own life, um, as someone who became Catholic as an adult, and so I received those two sacraments as an adult, I was baptized as an infant in the Presbyterian Church, and then when I was in my mid-twenties, I in Catholic through RCA, and so I was confirmed and received First Communion. Shortly after that, I married too, so a couple of spring sacraments in that year, but, um, and received First Reconciliation. I, I thought about spiritual gifts. I mean, 
this isn't foreign to like my Protestant upbringing. He's talked about spiritual gifts. I've even done inventories and discernment and all of that. So I kind of had a sense of how I was gifted. But after receiving the confirmation and the first communion, I can literally say that looking back, I notice a change as far as um, the use of those gifts and, and in a sense an increase in those gifts, or maybe a better recognition and more ability to use those gifts. Um, especially like teaching, for example. Discern the gift of teaching. Um, growing up, I wouldn't have been comfortable at all standing in front of a group. And it took some steps and some experience to get over that. But uh, once I received confirmation, there is a sense of, this is what I'm called to do. Uh, knowledge, another uh, Charism that I'm certain that I have. Okay, growing up, you know, I was always good in school, you know, got good grades and all of that. But I received the sacraments of confirmation, Eucharist, reconciliation, and marriage. I started graduate school, and I felt like more than any time before, and I think partly it's because now I have a sense of the fullness of the faith, the Catholic faith, but more than any time before in graduate school, I just felt like I was able to absorb things more easily, just flowed more naturally. Um, I felt more passionate about learning and knowledge than ever before. And I credit that in many ways to the reception of those sacraments. So keep that in mind. This is why it's so important in the life of our faith and living out our charism to be regular receivers of the sacraments. And especially when it comes to the sacrament of reconciliation, um, to, to take advantage of that gift we have, of that healing and confession, because we're going to be more effective instruments of God's grace if our own souls are cleansed, if we're living in a state of grace, God freely communicates His grace through us, and we're more free to use our charisms if we're living in that state of grace. Because basically, sin hinders our use of the charisms. And so when we have sin, when we're in habitual sin or we commit serious sin, we need to be cleansed of that so we can more effectively use the gifts that God has given us. Uh, anointing, too, you know, another sacrament of healing. That can have a great effect on using our charisms. And then sacraments of marriage and holy orders, we call them the sacraments of, um, of service or connected to our vocation, or as we're called to marry the or to uh, the, the priesthood. Um, we can relate that with religious life, although the religious don't receive ordination or sacrament take their vows, but that calling is how we're going to live out and communicate our charism. So I talked about how after Anna and I got married, it was very soon after, it was like two or three weeks after we got married, we went through a charism discernment program. Very helpful as newlyweds because we were able to recognize the different gifts we each have and how they complement one another. And it probably prevented a lot of tension because, you know, easily get frustrated with our spouse when you know they're doing something one way and you say I do that totally in a different way or they really like spending their time this way and I like spending my time this way and so we can understand each other better and we can better live out our call together as a couple to be missionary disciples to share Christ with the world together if we recognize our charisms and how they complement one another and serve together. Same with those who all the holy orders um, using their charisms within that sacrament of service. So keep in mind, these are these are gifts, they're graces from God, and sacraments are a key source to that grace. And so we want to visit the sacraments regularly. And also keep in mind that um, these are different from natural talents that we do inherit. We may have at birth, they're gifts given to us. That's even helpful in knowing how to talk about these because sometimes the hesitation is, well, I don't, I don't want to you know, be boastful. I don't want to be telling people, like, oh, I'm, I'm so good at this. You know, just look, look at me, I'm going to do this. And it just comes, comes so easily to me to do this, and I get so much energy and joy from doing this. Okay, so you, you don't want to maybe say it in a certain tone or be haughty in the way you communicate, but you can um, say, look, you know, God has given me this gift, and I want to use it to serve Him. I'm going to boldly, courageously do that, and I'm not afraid to step up and say, 
You know, God's given me this gift of discernment, so I think this is my role to play um, because I want to use this gift to serve.